Marvin, obviously it's very difficult to talk about football when things are going on outside, mm -hmm. but we can just focus on the game today. That was a performance and a half, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Sandra, as you said. Um, the difficulties that are going on outside probably puts things into perspective, but you know, looking at the football side of it, yeah, they're absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, to a player, they were absolutely brilliant. Gave everything. Um, you saw players coming off with cramp, uh, you know, and, and that's what you expect. Just go out there and give 100%. And I said to them over at 60 minutes you last, or in Paul Mackay's case, 119 minutes. Um, just go out there and give it absolutely everything and then empty the tank, and, and they did that today. For the first five minutes, it looked. Okay, it's mm -hmm. going to be wave after wave of after wave. But once they got the goal, Queens really settled into it, and it was, as I say, a performance and a half. Yeah, you know they started quickly, and we expected that. You know, obviously we're losing to Falkirk in the Challenge Cup. Um, I imagine Jim had been in all week saying that doesn't happen again. We're playing another League One team. Um, you go out there and stamp your authority. Um, sometimes in football, you know, money gets you. A certain type of player, you know, boys that are played at the top level. So we knew we were going to be, you know, under a bit of pressure throughout the game. And like I said, they started fast. They were trying to target our right hand side with, you know, crossing in from that side and targeting Oscar at the back post. And then it led to a goal. Um, but as you said, you know, we settled back into the game. I said to the players, you're going to have to deal with adversity today. Um, be perfect to, you know, keep a clean sheet. But if we don't, when they score, we can't afford to get our heads down um, and just have to just get on with the game because at the end of the day, it's going to be a 90 minute game. Turned out to be a 120 minute game, so I apologise to the players for lying to them. Um, but, you know, as I said, they dealt with it extremely well. And it was back to basics today, wasn't it? Just clearing those lines when they needed to. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, sometimes you can get away from that. Um, but I, I thought they were absolutely fantastic in terms of, you know, players putting their body on the line and blocking things. And some of the defending was fantastic. Um, you know, I, I don't want to single people out. So, you know, I think, I think every single person did their job to the best of their ability today. I mean, you do that, you know, win, lose or draw, you come off the pitch and say, do you know what, we've actually given it everything today. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was fantastic. And I said to them after, you know, I feel, I feel, I feel emotional because it's been, a, it's been a tough time this season. We get that, um, you know, everyone would have written us off today. Nobody would have given us a chance of winning that game of football today. And they showed a siege mentality, you know, that we don't care what people have to say. We don't care what people think. You know, we're going to go out there and perform to the best of our ability and see where that takes us. On that, the critics during the week were saying after your interview last week that you'll have lost the dressing room, you've you've lost the dressing room, the players will never want to play for you again. That proves that that's just rubbish. Yeah, it's interesting that, isn't it? Because, you know, I, I don't do social media, Sandra. Um, but, you know, as you said, people will be out there that have never stepped foot in this dressing room, that have never seen us train, don't see the, the bond that, you know, I have with the players and then the players have with me and the staff. But... You know, social media is one of these things where people always want to speak about negativity, don't they? They always want to be negative on social media without having a clue of what's going on within this dressing room. Um, you know, the players know that, that I have their back and they have my back. Um, you know, I protect them whenever they need protecting. But, like you saw last week, when they need to be reminded of, of their duties as a professional footballer, you know, I'll remind them of that. Um, and it doesn't come from, from a bad place. It comes from, you know, a place of caring, of wanting the best for them. I want them to achieve what they should achieve in their careers. I want them to achieve what they should achieve at this football club. Um, so, so I called them out. And you know, as you said, you saw the reaction today. You know, I never questioned my players when they crossed that white line. What I questioned was the process in, in order to get there. And as I said, you know, a lot of people who haven't played the game at a professional level will, will have an opinion on those things. But I've played the game. You know, I understand what it takes. I understand the sacrifices you have to make. And Sandra, when you go away from making those sacrifices by two, three, four percent, it makes a massive impact because it's a team game. So if everybody's doing exactly the same thing, all of a sudden you're losing a lot um, f throughout the team. So as I said, you know, my players reacted. You know, we had some uh, honest conversations on Sunday, Monday <laughs> and Tuesday, um, but they've been absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And that's a reminder to them what they can do, you know, when they, everybody does it right. Because it's been a minority but when everybody does it right. That shows what they can do. That's with seven injuries, by the way. Not many league one teams can take seven injuries. And people might not want to hear about that. They're the facts. You know, you look at our injury list and the quality of those players that are unable to play, um, you know, it makes it all the sweeter today. And they've now set a standard again that they need to maintain? Yeah, yeah. 
both off and on the pitch. And, and I always say, you know, what you do off the pitch and the process in order to get there to play games mirrors what happens on the pitch. You know, it's no coincidence. You know, if you don't live your life right off the pitch and then think you can come perform on a Saturday, you know, you get a sharp lesson <laughs> in, you know, reality. Um, and like I said, you know, these players are here. We've got, you know, predominantly young squad, I think, you know, between 20 and 24 years of age outside maybe five or six and you know I don't have to only coach them with my coaching staff but as an educational thing here as well and, and that falls upon me you know so I want to make them all around better people I want them to come, come away from this football club as better players but also as you know better people as well and, and, and that's you know a duty that I do have. And it's just wanting the best for the club and wanting the best for the players? Yeah you know I, I demand as close to perfection as possible I don't care whether you know, people say it's League One in Scotland or from at Real Madrid. I manage in exactly the same way and I set exactly the same standards because standards don't cost you anything, Sandra. You know, it's not a monetary thing. Standards are free. You know, as I said, you know, to make those sacrifices, to make sure you are the best version of yourself. I sacrifice so much and the players know that, you know, and to have the minority, you know, thinking they can go a little bit away from that, you know, we've been reminded that that isn't a possibility. And it's not just the boys who have been fit, it's some of the boys who have been injured as well. You know, there's nothing worse than realising that you're causing your own injuries, you know, your own niggles. So as I said, it's been an educational thing, but I've been delighted with their response. You know, they've shown massive, massive character, you know, to a player, shown huge character. And I couldn't be more delighted, not only with today's result, because it was deserved, but the reaction of the, you know, the other players as well. It's been absolutely brilliant. They've been a joy to be around this week. One question that's been asked around the place today is that you didn't fill the bench. The people are asking <clears> why you didn't choose to use some of the younger players just to put them on the bench to give them that experience. Yeah, um, again, it's fantastic when people ask these questions. Uh, Lewis Curry played yesterday in the FA Youth Cup, so you know we won that game three 0 uh, Finley Kennedy is exactly the same. So I'm not sure, you know, unless we go younger than the under 18s I'm not really sure what players they wanted us to use to fill the bench um, I'm not sure you can put 15 year olds on the bench I'll have to actually check that um, but yeah no brilliant question but there is no younger players to put on there is, is the answer and that just shows that goes back to your earlier statement about how people don't know what's going on yeah. in the dressing room yeah exactly you know and people as I said will always want to point the finger and always say well, why are you not doing this and why are you not doing that without checking the facts and that's why I stay off social media because you get a lot of that, Sandra, you know, people asking questions that, you know, they really probably should know the answer to. So, as I said, in answer to those people who said, why are you not filling the bench? Um, yeah, we, we, I'm not sure we can put 15 yards on there, but I will check the rules and, and, and see if that's a possibility. Today's, as I say, the, the football, the highs of the football and then going to the lows of what's going afterwards. So, a thought for those involved? Yeah, you know, a thought for those involved, definitely. Um, you know, hopefully everybody pulls through. Um, it, it's hard to, you know, come out and, and then hear that and it puts everything into perspective, really. You know, um, as I said, you know, terrible accident that happens. Um, but as again, you know, shows the character of the squad. Obviously, a young man witnesses that and the players bring him in here. A young boy, you know, speaking about football, speaking about gaming, um, which they, <laughs> you know, they're very knowledgeable at. Um, but no, on a serious note, you know, to bring him in, you know, after him witnessing something like that was absolutely brilliant from the players. And as I said, I, I really hope everybody pulls through because um, that's the important thing.